Hello and welcome to our channel guys. Today we're going to learn about Canizero reactions. Now we know a lot of you have confusions between Canizero and Aldol reaction. We've already done a video on Aldol which you can check out. In this video, apart from learning about Canizero reactions, we'll also give you some basic differences between Canizero and Aldol. So let's begin. The first thing which you need to know about Canizero reaction is that it is applicable only to aldehydes. And that right there is your first difference between aldol and canizero. Aldol reaction is applicable to both aldehydes and ketones. But canizero reaction is applicable only to aldehydes. Also, there is one condition for canizero reaction. There should be no alpha hydrogen present in the aldehydes for it to perform canizero. And that gives us our second difference. Because for aldol reactions, if you remember, you need to have alpha hydrogens present in them then only they'll give you aldol reactions. So what we've learned so far, aldehydes with no alpha hydrogen will give you canizero reactions. Let's see examples of molecules which perform canizero. The first example which we have is formaldehyde, HCHO. In this, CHO is the functional group. You can see that there is no carbon attached to it and so there is no alpha carbon and no alpha hydrogen present in this molecule. The se second example which we are going to see is benzaldehyde which is C6H5CHO. Let's draw the structure of this. As you can see, CHO is the functional group again here. There is an alpha carbon but there are no alpha hydrogen present in this molecule. Both of these molecules will give you canizero reaction. Now we move on to the reagents which are required for canizero. Canizero reaction will happen only in the presence of concentrated bases, also called 50% bases. For example, concentrated KOH, concentrated NaOH, etc. So, that right there is your third difference between aldol and canizero reactions. For aldol reaction, you needed dilute alkali. And for canizero reactions, you need concentrated bases. Now, we move on to the reaction analysis. Now the kind of question which you usually get is HCHO in the presence of concentrated KOH or concentrated NaOH will give you a product. You generally have to find out what that product is. So let's see how we can solve this. Step number one, repeat the reactant. We'll write the reactant molecule twice. After that, step number two. Now out of these two molecules of the reactants, we'll oxidize one molecule and reduce the other. So first we'll carry out the oxidation. Whenever the CHO group, that is the aldehyde group, Whenever that oxidizes, you get acid. So, when CHO oxidizes, you get COOH. So, when HCHO oxidizes, you get HCOOH. H remains the same. Only the functional group changes from aldehyde to acid. From CHO to COOH. Now, because this is happening in the presence of NaOH and there are Na plus ions present in the reaction, HCOOH reacts with these Na plus ions and it forms HCOONA. So that is our product from oxidation. Now we will reduce the other HCHO molecule. On reduction, aldehyde forms alcohol. So the CHO group converts to CH2OH. HCHO, it reduces to HCH2OH, which is nothing but CH3OH. Again, you'll notice the H remains the same. Only CHO changes from CHO to CH2OH. Now we'll write down all of these reactions together. So, HCHO plus HCHO in the presence of concentrated NaOH will give you HCOONA plus CH3OH. And so, you can see we found a solution. Now, one important thing which you need to notice here is that the number of carbon atoms in the reactant and in the product remain the same. We began with two carbon atoms in the two HCHO molecules and we've ended up with two carbon atoms in the products as well. Another important thing which you need to know is that since reduction and oxidation are happening simultaneously in this reaction, so canizero reaction is also included under redox reaction. That is our fourth difference right there between aldol and canizero reactions. While canizero reaction is included under redox reactions, aldol is not a redox reaction. Now, with your learning so far, let's see if you can solve the next canizero reaction. C6H5CHO, that is benzaldehyde, in the presence of concentrated KOH, gives what product? Could you solve it? First thing, again, we'll repeat the reactant. So, we'll write benzaldehyde twice. 
first we'll oxidize one molecule of benzaldehyde and then we'll reduce the other molecule and we'll see what products we get so during oxidation the cho group again changes to cooh and then because there are free k plus ions present in the reaction so it further changes to cook so it becomes c6h5 cook only the cho changes to cook in the reduction reaction the cho changes to CH2OH again the attaching group remains the same only the functional group CHO changes to CH2OH so the two products we've got is C6H5 COOK and C6H5 CH2OH we'll just write that down you can again see the number of carbon atoms in the reactants and in the products remains the same it is again a redox reaction so i hope we've helped you understand canizero reactions a little better and understand the basic differences between canizero reaction and aldol reaction thank you so much for watching this video in the comments down below you can give us ideas about what you want to see these videos on hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to our channel we'll see you next time bye bye